Hi everyone, welcome back to my channel. Today I'm going to be doing a tag. I, uh, this is an original tag that um, I was tagged by the creator of. Um, and this is the Mooks and the Gripes bucket list book tag created by Sean the Book Maniac who kindly tagged me on Instagram to do it. Um, this uh, tag is um, in order to promote uh, the Mooks and the Gripes podcast which Sean the Book Maniac uh, really enjoys and is trying to get the word about out about. I will link Sean's um, original tag video down below where he explains all about the creator of the podcast and what it's all about. Um, so definitely check that out. Uh, this is basically a tag where you recommend 10 books that are on your bucket list um, to eventually get to, but they're not exactly on your TBR, so to speak. What Sean has act asked us to do is to recommend 10 books that are on our bucket list. An optional plot twist to this tag is to have subscribers um, vote in some way about two books from this bucket list that the person doing the tag needs to get to by whatever date that the person doing the tag decides they want to get to it. So I'm going to choose um, by the end of 2022, which is the end of next year, to in order to read two of these books, which you, the viewers, can vote on in the comment box down below, and I'll compile all of that data and let you know in a future video what that is. So please vote. Um, these are 10 books on my bucket list that I hope to get to at some point, but they're not really pressing for me. So it's it's in your hands which two I will read by the end of next year. So the first book I'm going to talk about is Johnny Appleseed by Joshua Whitehead. Uh, of all of these books that I'm going to talk about, I literally wrote them down on my uh, TBR for the future list. Um, because I heard good things about them, but I don't remember anything about them. So I am going to read some blurbs just so that I know what they're about, you know what they're about, and then you have some information in which to use when you vote. So Johnny Appleseed by Joshua Whitehead. Um, here's what it's about. Off the reserve and trying to find ways to live and love in the big city, Johnny becomes a cyber sex worker who fetishizes himself in order to make a living. Self-ordained as an NDN glitter princess, Johnny has one week before he must return to the res and his former life to attend the funeral of his stepfather. The next seven days are like a fevered dream, stories of love, trauma, sex, kinship, ambition, and the heartbreaking recollection, recollection of his beloved Kokum, or grandmother. Johnny's world is a series of breakages, appendages, and linkages, and as he goes through the motions of preparing to return home, he learns how to put together the pieces of his life. I think that sounds amazing. Um, really, really looking forward to get to that someday. I think it's right up my alley. And the next one, and several of these, are going to be classics. The next one is definitely a classic. And this is The Foresight Saga by John Galsworthy. Um, this was originally three novels, I believe, but I think that most editions now compile them into one edition, uh, one novel. So here's what this is about. When the Foresight Saga was shown on television in 1967, it was hugely successful. The nation was gripped by the masterful visual telling of the Foresight family's troubled story and adapted its activities to suit the next transmission. The Foresight Saga comprising The Man of Property, In Chancery, and To Let is here produced by Wordsworth for the first time in a single volume. Initially, the narrative centers on Soames Foresight, a successful solicitor living in London with his beautiful wife, Irene. A pillar of the late Victorian upper middle class, materially wealthy, his appears to be a golden existence endowed with all the necessary possessions for a man of property. But beneath this very proper exterior lies a core of unhappiness and brutal relationships. The marriage of Soames and Irene disintegrates in bitter recrimination creating a feud within the family that will have far-reaching consequences. I love a good family saga, so that one really interested me. And the next is another classic. This one is called Bud and Brooks, The Decline of a Family by Thomas Mann. And here's what this is about. Bud and Brooks, first published in Germany in 1900 when Mann was only 25, has become a classic of modern literature the story of four generations of a wealthy bourgeois family in northern Germany. With consummate skill, man draws a rounded picture of middle-class life, of births and christenings, marriages, divorces and deaths, successes and failures. 
These commonplace occurrences, intrinsically the same, vary slightly as they recur in each succeeding generation. Yet as the Buddenbrooks family eventually succumbs to the seductions of modernity, seductions that are at variance with its own traditions, its downfall becomes certain. In immensity of scope, richness of detail, and fullness of humanity, Buddenbrooks surpasses all other fa modern family chronicles. It has indeed proved a model for the most of them. Judged as the greatest of man's novels by some critics, it is ranked as among the greatest by all. Another family saga. Love that. The darker, the better. I don't know. We'll see. Um, and the next one is, I know that this is a retelling of another book. Um, <laughs> I think it's, what is it, Wuthering Heights is a retelling of? Or is it a retelling of, well, it's White Sargasso Sea um, by Jean Reese. It's not a retelling, but it's from the perspective of one of the characters in one of those books that was kept in the attic, I remember. Um, so here's what it's about. White Sargasso Sea, a masterpiece of modern fiction, when was Jean Reese's return to the literary center stage. She had a startling early career and was known for her extraordinary prose and haunting women characters. With White Sargasso Sea, her last and best-selling novel, she ingeniously brings into light one of fiction's most fascinating characters. Ah, Jane Eyre. That's right. Uh, the Mad Woman in the Attic from Charlotte Bronte's Jane Eyre. This mesmerizing work introduces us to Antoinette Cosway, a sensual and protected young woman who is sold into marriage to the prideful Mr. Rochester. Reese portrays Cosway amidst a society so driven by hatred, so skewed in its sexual relations that it can literally drive a woman out of her mind. Oh, I mean, that, doesn't that just sound amazing? I've heard amazing things about Jean Reese's writing in general, um, but this one really catches my interest. I do really enjoy the book Jane Eyre. Um, I can't believe I mixed that up with Buthering Heights, but anyway. So are you going to vote for that one? We'll see. Next is Of Human Bondage by W. Somerset Maugham. Um, I was recently gifted this uh, beautiful book by Sandy from uh, Ms. Rizalot's friend Sonia, who is a great subscriber to my channel, and I love uh, interacting with Sonia here and on Instagram. Um, she kindly sent this book to me after finding out that I wanted to read it, so will it make the cut? We'll see. Here's what it's about. Of Human Bondage is the first and most autobiographical of Mom's novels. It is the story of Philip Carey, an orphan eager for life, love, and adventure. After a few months studying in Heidelberg and a brief spell in Paris as a would-be artist, Philip settles in London to train as a doctor, and that is where he meets Mildred, the loud but irresistible waitress with whom he plunges into a formative, tortured, and masochistic affair, which very nearly ruins him. Love a good orphan story. Uh, love some masochism. So we'll see. We'll see if that one makes the cut. Next on the list for you to vote on is... Oh, I love the cover of this book, is A Boy's Own Story, a novel by Edmund White. Very brief blurb on this one, um, but isn't that cover beautiful? I love it. Um, originally published in 1982 as the first of Edmund White's trilogy of autobiographical novels, A Boy's Own Story became an instant classic for its pioneering portrayal of homosexuality. The book's unnamed narrator growing, narrator, growing up during the 1950s, is beset by aloof parents. A cruel sister, a relentless mocking from his peers, compelling him to seek out works of art and literature as solace and to uncover new relationships in the struggle to embrace his own sexuality. Lyrical and poignant with powerful evocations of shame and yearning, this is an American literary treasure. This book is right up my alley. Definitely a coming-of-age story. Um, queerness thrown in there. It's perfect. All right, and next on the list, this one got a ton of excellent reviews. I am dying to read it at some point. I know it's not out in softcover yet, so whenever it does come out in softcover, I really hope to read it. Will you vote for it? We'll see. And that is The Yield by Tara June Winch. Knowing that he will soon die, Albert Poppy Gondowindy has one final task he must fulfill. A member of the indigenous Wiradjuri tribe, he has spent his adult life in Prosperous House and the town of Massacre Plains. Yikes. A small enclave of the banks of the Murumbi River. 
Before he takes his last breath, Poppy is determined to pass on the language of his people, the traditions of his ancestors, and everything that was ever remembered by those who came before him. The land itself aids him. He finds the words on the wind. After his passing, Poppy's granddaughter August returns home from Europe, where she has lived the past ten years, to attend his burial. Her overwhelming grief is compounded by the pain, anger, and sadness of memory, of growing up in poverty before her mother's incarceration, of the racism she and her people endured, of the mysterious disappearance of her sister when they were children, an event that has haunted her and changed her life. Her homecoming is bittersweet as she confronts the love of her kin and news that Prosperous is to be repossessed by a mining company. Determined to make amends and honor Poppy and her family, she vows to save their land, a quest guided by the voice of her grandfather that leads into the past, the stories of her people, the secrets of the river. That sounds so amazing. Uh, yeah, definitely will be getting to that sometime in the future, even if you don't vote for it, but maybe you will. And the next one is a book that I know that Leo from A Little Book Life uh, really enjoys. Actually, he recommended it to me and I saw him talk about it on his channel, I believe, which is where I learned of it for the first time. And it sounds amazing. This writer is somebody I'm really interested in getting to at some point. And this is Brief Lives by Anita Bruckner. With this novel, Booker Prize winning author Anita Bruckner confirms her reputation as an unparalleled observer of social nuance and deeply felt longings. Brief Lives chronicles an unlikely friendship, that between the flamboyant, monstrously egocentric Julia and her mon and the modest, self-effacing Faye, who is at once fascinated and appalled by Julia's excesses. Thrust together by their husband's business partnership and by a guilty secret, Julia and Faye develop an intense bond that is nonetheless something less than intimacy, a relationship in which we see our own uneasy compromises, not only with other people, but with life itself. I love a good pairing of um, two adult women as the um, driving force of the novel. Uh, female friendships, I believe that's why Leo recommended that book, and I think it sounds amazing. So the next one also got a ton of buzz within the past year, uh, and for good reason, I believe. I don't really care for the cover of this book, but the story sounds perfect for me, and so uh, I hope to get to it at some point. And this is Burnt Sugar by Avni Doshi. In her youth, Tara was wild. She abandoned her marriage to join an ashram, and while Tara is busy as a partner to the ashram spiritual leader, Baba, little Antara is cared for by an older devotee, Kali Mata, an American who came to the ashram after a devastating loss. Tara also embarks on a stint as a beggar, mostly to spite her affluent parents and spends years chasing a disheveled homeless artist, all with young Antara in tow. But now Tara is forgetting things, and Antara is an adult, an artist, and married, and must search for a way to make peace with, the, with a past that haunts her as she confronts the task of caring for a woman who never cared for her. Sharp as a blade, and laced with caustic wit, Burnt Sugar unpicks the slippery, choking cord of memory and myth that binds mother and daughter. Is Tara's memory loss real? Are Antara's memories fair? In vivid and visceral prose, Tibor Jones, South Asia Prize-winning writer Avni Doshi, tells a story at once shocking and empathetic about love and betrayal between a mother and a daughter, a journey into shifting memories, altering identities, and the subject subjective nature of truth. Burnt Sugar is a stunning and unforgettable debut. Um, this mother-daughter sort of um, did the mother ever care for you sort of story is right up my alley, and I really am interested in that story. And I do like the idea of the memory loss as a part of that as well. Um, how does somebody account for how they treated you if they don't remember doing it? Or, or something like that. Do you know what I mean? So is that going to be one for voting? I don't know. Who's going to win? Who's going to win? The last one, the tenth book that I'm recommending, um, well, putting in the race, I guess, is You Exist Too Much by uh, Zaina Arafat. I can't remember where I saw this book or where I learned of it, but I immediately was interested in it. Here's what it's about. On a hot day in Bethlehem, a 12-year-old Palestinian-American girl is yelled at by a group of men outside the Church of the Nativity. She has exposed her legs in a biblical city, an act they deem forbidden, and their judgment will echo on through her adolescence. When our narrator finally admits to her mother that she is queer, her mother's response only intensifies a sense of shame. 
You exist too much, she tells her daughter. Told in vignettes that flash between the U.S. and the Middle East, from New York to Jordan, Lebanon, and Palestine, Zaina Arafat's debut novel traces her protagonist's progress from blushing teen to sought-after DJ and aspiring writer. In Brooklyn, she moves into an apartment with her first serious girlfriend and tries to content herself with their comfortable relationship, but soon her loggings, so closely hidden during her teenage years, explode out into reckless romantic encounters and obsessions with other people. Her desire to thwart her own destructive impulses will eventually lead her to The Ledge, as an unconventional treatment center that identifies her affliction as love addiction. In this strange and closed society, she will start to consider the unnerving similarities between her own internal traumas and divisions and those of the places that have formed her. Opening up the fantasies and desires of one young woman caught between cultural, religious, and sexual identities, You Exist Too Much is a captivating story charting two of our most intense longings for love and a place to call home. I think that whole story just sounds amazing. I have not read a lot of um, stories set in the Middle East. Um, there are some on my TBR for next year, but this one just sounds amazing. The fact that it mixes a lesbian story in there is really incredible. I do want to read more lesbian fiction um, because that's a very um, blind spot in my reading. Um, so those are the 10 books that I am putting forth in the Mooks and the Gripes uh, bucket list book tag. So please comment below down uh, in the comment box which two books you would want to see me read by the end of 2022. And I will uh, read those two books whatever they should be. I am going to tag a couple people to do this. Um, I don't know like how many people we're supposed to tag um, to do it, but I am going to tab tag a couple people because I just think it would be really interesting. One of them I want to tag because I think it's really a sadistic thing for me to do and I think it would be funny, and that's Michael K. Vaughn, who has a ton of reading projects already to complete. So I'm going to throw Michael K. Vaughn uh, into this mix just to add a couple more books to his list, hopefully. And I'm also going to tag, um, let me see, I think I will tag Yara from Drawn to Stories, uh, who has kindly tagged me on a couple of tags recently, which I have coming up in a couple weeks. And so that's the tag for today. This is the Mooks and the Gripes bucket list book tag by Sean the Book Maniac. Thank you, Sean, for tagging me. Please check out Sean's original tag video below. It explains all about the podcast that he's trying to promote and gives you a, a bit of backstory about the creator for that. So that's what I've got today. I hope you enjoyed it. Please comment below, vote now, like the video, subscribe to my channel, and I look forward to seeing everybody on my next video on Thursday. Thanks for watching. I'll see you later. Bye.